Welcome to On Microsoft, the On Microsoft podcast, where we talk about Microsoft stuff on a podcast. I'm your host today, Cream Anderson. I'm joined by David Allen. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Everyone who is not part of the Surface team, I suppose, because uh, yes. that is going to be our main topic of discussion for today. But uh, before we even get into that, let's get into the headlines because Microsoft had a big week, a big week of news, uh, starting with Starfield having a huge European launch, uh, which is you know good signs for uh, this uh, new first party exclusive for the company. Uh, we're talking about the CMA in you know the dead of night almost, finally gives provisional okay to go ahead with the Activision Blizzard deal, which is another big pillar down. So we're two down, two big pillars down, one more to go with the FTC. Uh, again, provisional. So they'll give us a formal uh, announcement, uh, some, maybe sometime next week, or at least before the 18th of October. Well, Microsoft Launcher integrates being chat uh, and the home screen on Android, which is, again, also big, because Microsoft Launcher hasn't gotten any love in like two years, I suppose. Uh, we also had a huge Microsoft uh, Xbox division leak uh, where we got information about upcoming Bethesda games, uh, hybrid consoles, uh, a new version of the, I guess, mid-cycle release uh, Xbox Series X, uh, kind of what Microsoft planned to do before buying Bethesda. Uh, we got a ton of information on that, and we're going to quickly go over it. And then we're going to jump into, like I said, our main topic of discussion, which is the uh, SVP of Windows and Devices, Panos Panay, is leaving the company. We found this information out, I believe, Wednesday, following that information, or no, Tuesday. Then following that information, we started to get some uh, news about what was going to happen at the Microsoft event, which did happen on Thursday. It was a bit of a letdown, but we'll go over why we think that is. And... Uh, why he potentially left. There was a Bloomberg article uh, that came out. Uh, was it Bloomberg? I might be getting my sources incorrect, but I will get them right when we cover it. Um, talking about why he might have left and went to Amazon of all places. So he went across town. Uh, and what that means for Microsoft going forward, especially given the way that this presentation went down and the talk about a reduction in overall device uh, products going forward. So uh, with that being said, let's run through our headlines and get into the fun stuff. All right, let's have a little fun with these. Uh, for those Starfield players out there, it looks like we are, we along with Microsoft and Bethesda, are getting our wish. Starfield is holding the test of time. It's not doing a Redfall, a splash, and a a splash. I don't even dash. think Redfall had a splash. It was like someone slipped in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> um, biggest launch in. Europe so far for Starfield. It beat out Forza Horizon 5 for the best selling IP in Europe, in addition to being the fifth best selling game overall in 2023. Thus far behind Hogwarts Legacy, Diablo 5, The Legend of Zelda, Tears, Te Te Tears of the Kingdom, and Star Wars Jedi. It has, however, beat out Resident Evil 4. And Final Fantasy XI. So, that's good news for Starfield. Starfield just also passed 1 million concurrent players. And, you know, just just processing that for a moment is, is just amazing that you sit down one night and you put, you know, you hit the button to launch Starfield. And to think there's a million other people out there that are playing the same game that you are, I'm going to have to say... I've kind of gotten in Starfield and I've kind of fallen down the Starfield rabbit hole. I will admit my game started about 7.30 last Saturday night. And um, I say it quietly, probably didn't end about 2.30 Sunday morning and I didn't even realize it. So, yeah, I've kind of fallen down the Starfield hole, too. Uh, I think that is awesome. Obviously, yes. I've been playing myself. Just met my parents uh, in the game, which is pretty cool. I will not be sending them home money because that is not the uh, the, the <laughs> character trait I picked. I'm more of a, I think I'm a I think I'm a gangster. So I've I've tried to steal ships left and right, uh, but it's super fun. Uh, still figuring out some stuff. Haven't even gone back to the main mission in two days. So I'm one of those players. But I am glad that my it, I mean that Bethesda is getting their uh, flowers as of right now because they did yes. a lot of work and it's perhaps been one of the best games that i've played initially from the company 
Uh, with that being said, I'm going to jump over to the CMA stuff. So we can, like I said, get to our headline, our main topic. Uh, CMA, uh, I believe last night, OK, Microsoft's plan to sell cloud gaming to Ubisoft as a final decision uh, comes near. Like I said, uh, we will be expecting them to give their final report of uh, sometime between now and the uh, 18th of October. And that is the deadline that they have set. But a provisional OK has come through, which is more than they got the first time around, which was a declarative no. Uh, so this time around, what Microsoft uh, did was they offered uh, to give or sell, I guess, or somehow figured out a way to offer Ubisoft as an arbiter for uh, Activision's cloud streaming uh, and uh, licensing. Uh, I think we mentioned this a few weeks ago. We'll quickly go over it. Basically, what Ubisoft would do is that any games that were going to be put onto a streaming platform by Microsoft, if they own them, will have to go through uh, Ubisoft, and Microsoft will be uh, we'll have no preferential cheap per se uh, when it comes to that. So if they decide to put Call of Duty on Xbox Game Pass, that automatically means that it, it is uh, up to Ubisoft to distribute it to every other platform. And Microsoft will also have to pay the same uh, market rate uh, for streaming that game, even though they would own the, the mother company of uh, the streaming service. So uh, again, Diablo, if, it, if, they, if Activision slash Microsoft decides to put it on streaming, it will immediately become available for other streaming services in the UK, uh, elsewhere in the world, in, in uh, uh, Asian markets, uh, in North America, you know, Canada, stuff like that, for their own streaming consoles and, and platforms. And Microsoft will pay to have that put on there. Uh, Microsoft will also get a percentage, uh, I believe, from Ubisoft for the amount of games that are streamed as well. So it is in their best interest to make almost as many games po uh, streaming on the platform as possible versus you know making things exclusive now this goes only for streaming uh, microsoft still owns the rights to uh games that are designed specifically for console and mobile uh so if they decide to you know make call of duty the full game available on you know the apple store because the new iphone 15 can handle it uh microsoft gets all of that money solely uh it doesn't go through ubisoft none of those kind of things but if they, again they decide to make it streaming on the xbox game pass that is when money, uh, that's when things start to get a little bit uh, dicier uh, as far as finances are concerned. So uh, again, we are two down uh, with the EU giving its a approval early on, the CMA coming back to a revisit of this and giving its provision okay. Now it's up to the FTC uh, in the US to finally figure out what it wants to do. And once that is uh, addressed and dealt with, go on with, uh, I guess, the new future for gaming at Microsoft. I'm going to add one thing into this just as something that I've not heard come up and maybe a little chuckle as well. Who, Whose cloud do you think Ubisoft is using to, to, to stream these games? Ah, there you go. I mean, you see, you, that that's kind of where the double dip may come in there, you know? This could be a triple dip. Basically, what they do is they have Activision create a game, a sequel, whatever, a new game, uh, make it available for every console playstation everything like that and they can they get all of the revenue and profit from that then wait <clears throat> excuse me then wait about a year or two put it on game pass pay a pay a bit of a streaming fee for it but get whatever the offset is from every other platform that now get, has access to it like playstation's uh, streaming service or uh tencent over in in china stuff like that and then also get us uh i guess a service fee for all of it running on azure through ubisoft so this this is a win 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 for microsoft uh again if the ftc gives it the thumbs up let's give it the thumbs up and let the gamers play we have we have waited for almost a year a little over a year you know since you know while you lawyers argue and have lunch and dinner and talk about it the gamers want to play. Let us play. Agreed. What's our next headline? Well, let's see what we got here. We covered Starfield, um, Microsoft Launcher, and um, for me that this this is kind of a big deal. Um, I don't use stock Android, and there are, as some of folks may know, there's various launchers out there that re set up your phone, do it dead. The home screen may be a little different. Your navigation may be a little different and microsoft has had the microsoft launcher out for a few years and they haven't like you said um 
in the preview. They've not given the Microsoft launcher a whole lot of love in the last couple of years, but I got a surprise the other morning when I woke up and I keep a search widget on the front of my phone and I looked and the little Bing B was right over there next to it. I'm like, what is this? Is this just a, you know, shortcut to Bing and you, you tap it and it brings up this nice window that is Bing chat. And I'm like, well, this is, you know, for this is the first what I call real mobile implementation because you can tell that it has been polished up to work on the mobile platform. And on top of it, there is a button that you can use after you've done your query to continue that query on your PC. And that it that's a really neat feature and I, I gotta say when I first saw this earlier this week and I started using it on my phone I have probably used Bing chat more this week than I have since the whole thing has been released because think about it we're going to talk about it here in a minute we don't have copilot on our PCs yet to make AI quick and easily accessible this is kind of the first move that Microsoft has made to just tap. There's Bing chat, get what you need, copy, paste, carry on. So way to go, Microsoft. This this was small, but when I saw how it was implemented, I think a lot of you folks out there listening or watching will agree. Pretty good little tool. It might be the shot in the arm Bing chat needs. Yeah, I uh, agree. I'm going to go on to the last bit of gaming news we have here, which is a lot of gaming news. Um, er, what was this? Wednesday, I believe. I want to say maybe Wednesday. Uh, Microsoft uh, uploaded a ton of files uh, to the FTC, you know, as part of this ongoing investigation about antitrust uh, between the New Deal. And unfortunately, I think someone at Microsoft, at least that's what the FTC is claiming, messed up and hit publish publicly. So we got a mm. treasure trove of Xbox news uh, that was meant for FTC eyes only. Fortunately, we got to see it and we get information about uh, several Bethesda games uh, with their roadmaps and when they're going to be released, uh, what some of the new things are going to be made, uh, like some of the new titles that are going to be made. We have information about uh, Dishonored 3, uh, Oblivion and Fallout 3 Remastered. Uh, and like I said, what those roadmaps are looking like. We also got uh, some leaks about uh, the new Xbox Cloud uh, being part of a hybrid console. So not only are we perhaps, you know, obviously losing the optical disk drive uh, with like the Xbox Series S, but we may be getting something that's designed specifically to work well with cloud. Uh, and they give you in these slides, you know, we have some screenshots and that we, you know, I suggest you guys go read this full write up on this because I'm just briefly going over it. Uh, but, you know, the basic design of this cloud hybrid thing is going to be using ARM64, uh, balanced with big little CPUs. It has a co-designed GPU with AMD licensing, uh, which is nothing new. I mean, this is kind of what the Xbox has already had. But it also will have some NPUs uh, designed specifically for uh, programmable machine learning versus the silicon, uh, I mean, silicon versus uh, high performance silicon and targeted workloads, uh, graphics innovation, you know, they're gonna be using DirectX for ray tracing stuff, uh, dynamic global illumination, micro polygon rendering optimizations, machine learning based super resolution. Uh, and it's gonna be using what they're calling lacking thin OS. Um, I guess this is some kind of Windows CE version. Uh, I always go back to CE, but I think it's just Windows, Windows CE. Core. Yeah, exactly. I think this is just going to be a Windows Core version of it, uh, where you don't have all of the like uh, heavy bloat on there. Maybe it's just the Xbox interface. Who knows? Uh, the last bit of information we got about uh, coming out of this was an Xbox Series uh, X with a gyro controller is part of another Xbox Massive leak. Looks like they've taken the design language from what was that trash can Apple Mac used? Uh, the circular mm -hmm. one. Forget. I think it was just. It was it the Mac. Whatever. It was the Mac Pro. Mac Pro. Uh, so you're talking they, about the black, the black circular the one. Black yeah, that trash that, can that no one yeah, that was could the use. Mac Pro. Yeah, vented through the top, and yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, it's it looks like a very similar design. So a picture a Microsoft uh, Xbox X, but in a circular version. So the vent's still at the top. Uh, now instead of being a square, it's rounded. 
uh, and you know it's supposed to be the most powerful version of the Xbox. Uh, again, this is leaked. We don't know uh, if this is in the pipeline or if it's un in the works as we speak. But uh, Microsoft sure has uh, visuals, marketing material for it, uh, some tech specs as well. So again, if you're interested in any of this leaked stuff, uh, as far as what Bethesda games are coming out, uh, what the new consoles could look like, what a new controller, which I do believe is almost confirmed. The new controller is confirmed. It's this like two-tone panda design where they have like a white bottom and a black top. Uh, that is, you know, all but confirmed. If you're interested in all of that, go check out the write-up. The last bit of information from this write-up was also that Microsoft had also planned to buy, uh, what was the other company? Uh, Nintendo. There we go. Uh, they had had negotiations and talks. I don't think Nintendo was ever going to sell, but they at least thought about it uh, before going after Bethesda and some other companies. Uh, this was about two years ago, so this really had nothing to do with Activision, at least at the time. Uh, but Microsoft was initially starting a time with one of the biggest fish out there, Nintendo. So, like I said, go check out the write-up. Uh, there are tons of there's tons of information everywhere. I'm sure there are YouTubers that have come through this in in mass in detail. Uh, we just want to give you guys, you know, the heads up going into your weekend. I kind of agree with Phil Spencer's very um, quick and brief response. We will release more on this stuff when we are ready. And I think people, you know, we all as, as tech enthusiasts, we love the juicy gossip. We, you know, what are they doing? What's coming? What's the rumor? What's new? And consumers like to hear that because they like to hear when the next title's coming, what the next title is. And I think, you know, it's rumors. Remember that, people. It, it can always change. Something can be... T Don't get your heart set on something you see like, okay, that's coming in 2024. It may not. That's why it's a roadmap. That's why it's a rumor. That roadmap may go a different direction. Something may get added. Something may get removed. So as nice as it is to see these leaks, just remember, they don't always come true. Yeah, until it's in your shopping cart uh, with a shipping date, it's vaporware, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. uh, and even then, uh, I was reading a write-up on The Verge about the company Doe, which used to be, uh, God, what was it called? Spe uh, I don't know, they made the that like surface pro clone that everyone loved for a minute um uh, uh the company started with an s they've gone through multiple changes anyway they're talking think about of it either but i can see their logo in my yeah i can't think yeah. of it either yeah, i think the the actual device is called the v uh anyway that company is issuing all kinds of rebates and warranties without actually delivering any cash to people so even if it's in your shopping cart, until I guess it's in your hands, it is vaporware, let's put it that way. Uh, we're going to go with our main topic of discussion for today. And do you want to let people know what we're talking about? Yep, let, me get, every, let me get everything up on my screen here. We've got, yeah, quite, a, we've got quite a bit, folks. We've got um, Panos Panay is leaving or has left Microsoft and... Rumor is he's headed over to Amazon. And, you know, some people may look at that going, okay, why is he going to Amazon? Why did he leave Microsoft? Maybe we need to address that first. And only Panos knows why he left Microsoft. We can only speculate like we were just talking about rumors. We can say, well, you know, maybe... He was told to leave. Maybe there were budget cuts. I have seen that rumor out there that the surface budget was getting drastically cut. Maybe he didn't like where Microsoft was going with the surface platform and chose to leave. There, there's a large list of reasons, you know, that we can speculate as to why Panos left and what will happen with the surface lineup. And we'll get to that in a minute, but rumor is again that word he, he he's going to amazon some people say he's going to touch the alexa devices something we were talking about off mic that i think needs to be brought up amazon does have this thing called the fire tablet and under the last in the last couple of years you've been able to purchase a keyboard and trackpad combo to go with that 
kind of has the look and feel of a Surface device. So we don't know what Panos is going to do at Amazon. We don't even know for sure that he's going to Amazon. There's not been an announcement. But if he goes, what does he do at Amazon? That's the question. Yeah, uh, as I'm going to refer to him going forward, Judas Panay is rumored to be headed, like you said, to Amazon. And he's going to be replacing, uh, what is it guy, Dave Limp or Steve Limp? He, uh, whoever is the current chief product officer over at uh, Amazon, uh, who, again, heads their uh, hardware division plus uh, AI services, uh, he is going to be taking over for him. Uh, and I believe he is in a senior position, so he's basically jumping sh ship uh, laterally uh, to kind of head over there. Uh, I think that is all but confirmed. Uh, the Business Insider report, I think I was referencing at the top of this podcast, and I think what you were just briefly talking about, gives us a little bit of insight in, into why he may have left. Again, we don't know until he says it from himself why he left, which I'm sure a book is going to be coming out in a couple of years, um, is in large part because uh, Microsoft has had a new concerted effort, obviously, to pivot to AI, which means uh, software and servers versus hardware and devices. Uh, and Panos, as you know, we've all kind of uh, grown to love him, love or hate him for, is a hardware guy. Uh, he loves to come out and talk about machining and fabrics and, you know, uh, cool to the touch kind of devices and how the flow in your hand is or you know your workflow things like that he's very eccentric on those kind of details less so about the actual uh operating systems and the integration of those kind of things uh, i think we've all seen the uh windows 11 ai event that he kind of headed up and i think all of us kind of scratching our head as to why he was there you seemed out of sorts because again he wasn't talking about a device he was talking about windows 11 and this has kind of been his history with Microsoft devices, like he isn't necessarily jazzed or pumped uh, about Windows. Uh, and when he has to come and talk about it, he kind of glosses over it or defers to the experts, people who spend time with these kind of devices until he can get back to, I mean, with those kind of services and development and engineering. And then when he can get back to a device itself, something in his hand, he really goes on uh, about that. Uh, this happened with the Lumia 950, I believe, to, to start Windows 10 when he was out with Terry Meyerson and they were talking about it on the, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I can't help but bring remember his enthusiasm when he he was always very enthusiastic on stage when it was time for the hardware and I can't help but remember when the Surface let me make sure I get this right the Surface Laptop Studio the original the first one came out I was watching the event I think I was watching it with you in fact and his enthusiasm of how that hinge worked and how you could use that hinge to do things in your workflow. It wasn't, like you're saying, it wasn't that we were talking about what Windows allows you to do. He was very excited about what the hardware would open up for the software. Now, there's the debate that it goes the other way as well, folks. I understand that. There's the debate that the software drives the hardware. But he was always the guy that the hardware drives the software. We've got this new flexible hinge. Look how it folds down. You can draw on it, you know, and it, it folds in the tent mode there. You can watch your content. And it amazed me just watching his facial reactions and the change, the change in his demeanor as he's going through this presentation. I feel like Microsoft hardware is losing something here. They, they may not see it. They may have his replacement in mind, but I feel like they're losing something here in the hardware division. I, I, that's just my feeling. Yeah, uh, I can't help but also agree with you on that, uh, at least as far as presentations are concerned. Uh, to that point, uh, I was mentioning the Lumia 950. If you go back to that uh, hardware event, I think that is also the first introduction of the Surface Book. And he goes on and on mm -hmm. in a very similar enthusiastic fashion about the fulcrum hinge of the Surface Book. When it comes time to talk about the phones, which again, I think he was kind of handed those, he glosses over that very quickly. He talks about a few in the hand details, but nothing about the Windows uh, mobile operating system and you know how that's supposed to better your life or anything like that and like i said you can go through event after event uh, when it comes time to talk about specs specifically intel chips and 
heating and cooling and things like that. He glosses over that kind of stuff to get to screens. And like I said, the, the Alcantara fabric and the way that the sound comes through the keyboard. Again, all great things, all things necessary in a presentation, but just not the entire picture. And again, I, I don't fault him for that. I, you, you are great at what you do. Uh, your presentations have always been engaging. Uh, but I did mention, I think I was talking to Daniel Rubino and some other people on Twitter about while we may be losing the Johnny Ive-ish feel of hardware, mm -hmm. ideally we get what Apple has done, which is a concentration on chipsets and performance and operating system over the fancy hinges and swivel things. Again, this is my very optimistic view of panels leaving and what happens to the, the Microsoft hardware division. We may get fewer Surface Duos and Surface Laptop Studios and Surface Books and things like that. We may just end up with a you know boring Surface Laptop at the end of the day and a Surface Pro. But hopefully with what Intel's coming out with, I think they had a brief announcement uh, yesterday about some chipsets and the roadmap for the 14th gen and stuff like that. Maybe we start to see an emphasis on bringing back, and I think they started this with the Surface Laptop Studio, bringing back micro or uh, full SD slots USB, USB A ports on devices, even on the uh, the Surface Pro or something like that. Maybe uh, putting dongles in the box, or things like you know considerations for the average user, for the enterprise user, versus you know trying to lead uh, as uh, you know quirky device devices going forward. Uh, what we do know is that again, combined with his leaving, uh, and we'll go over to what he's going to be doing at Amazon in a second. Uh, Microsoft has also come out saying that they're going to be focusing basically on what they call the hits of the service division line, which means we will no longer be seeing a refresh. And this was confirmed by uh, Zach Bowden, or at least uh, followed up with in, in his own sources, that we won't be seeing a follow up to the Surface Laptop, uh, Surface Studio. So the Surface Laptop or Surface Studio 2, I believe it is, was the last one that we got or no, whatever the most recent one, Surface Studio 3, I think. Uh, that one be, that may be the last one for a very long time, if ever. Uh, we won't be seeing any follow-ups to the Surface headphones. Obviously, the Surface Neo is long dead. Surface Duo, uh, we may not even be getting a Surface Duo 3, which was long rumored. Uh, all of those fancy uh, patents with all kinds of crazy hinges and you know potential other Surface phone devices. I don't even think we see Surface phones uh, anymore going forward. Uh, we won't see a Surface, I think the Surface Buds, Surface Earbuds or anything like that. All of those experimental kind of things and and uh, uh, device or profile uh, expansions will be cut down. Uh, we may just be seeing a focus on Surface Pro, Surface Laptop Studio, and the Surface Laptop Go and Surface Go uh, going forward. And even that may get cut down even further. Well, I'm an old man, folks. I, I, I've been around in the, the computer industry since the early 80s. And what has crossed my mind, and this is going to take some people a little way, a little ways back, MS DOS. Does anybody remember that name? And there, I, I'm going somewhere with this. MS DOS, <laughs> Windows 3.1, and even Windows 1.0 and Windows 2.0. Most most of us jumped on board in the Windows 3.0, the Windows 3.1 days. Microsoft was a software company first. They, they, they didn't do hardware. They were software first. They were operating systems. Then they give us this product called Microsoft Word. There was no such thing as Microsoft Office. They gave us the word processor. You know, sure, there were competitors out there. There was WordPerfect. There was Claris Works and a few other small ones. And now we've got this thing called AI. And to me, there, there, there's a direct comparison here. Back in the 80s, everybody wanted to do something with a keyboard and a screen. We produced documents. We wrote our papers. We made it a big deal to press print and print out a school paper back then. Okay, now we've got this thing. We're doing it again. AI. We're connecting everything together. We're connecting everything together in software. And, you know we're about to talk about it there's copilot out there now where everything is getting tied together in the operating system just like i just mentioned with the uh, microsoft launcher it's coming to the phone so i think maybe in some ways there'll be a hardware device or two out there i don't think microsoft is done there 
but I think we may in some ways be returning to our roots and having a software-based Microsoft as far as the consumer goes. Now, I'm not getting over into the cloud portion and all that good stuff, but as far as the consumer and the small business goes, I think we may see a software-driven Microsoft here for a little while. Yeah, I mean, that's always been Nadella's, uh, you know, niche. That's what he's known for. Uh, he came in and asked a bunch of hardware stuff that Steve Ballmer tried to expand into. So this is no, uh, so this shouldn't be surprised to people. I mean, it's unfortunate for those of us who like hardware and like Microsoft's particular brand of hardware. Uh, moving over to what panels will be doing uh, across town. And again, this, you know, this part of what we think might have been uh, his wanting to jump ship was that Microsoft recently, you know, purged over 10,000 jobs this past six months. Uh, they've also taken an ax to the service uh, employees uh, number count. Uh, they've also cut the budget. Uh, and I'm sure he's had issues with that because he was, you know, allowed to kind of, you know, reign free, freely, so to speak, when he was just doing service. But he, they also bundled windows underneath his uh, watch. And again, like we said, he's not, he doesn't come off as a guy who's mostly focused on software and in addition to that they also saddled his uh, division with the hololens so for the past uh four quarters you know not only has surface the surface line been down but add the you know r d that's going into the hololens but producing very little uh revenue and your whole division starts to look bad so you know he may have been fed up with that at the beginning of the year we also know that he interviewed for a you know position at sonos he, he wants to get into hardware that runs light os something that isn't uh you know make or break for the company when it comes to that uh windows is big windows is a big division being responsible for windows even though it's on the decline and microsoft's pivoting towards cloud and ai is still big it's still a huge business uh surface brings in roughly seven billion even uh for a year even during its decline windows brings in even more than that and you have to worry about licensing to oems and partners and how they're performing in the market uh, i'm sure panos probably doesn't have to deal with that headache uh, so he moves over to Amazon, who also had a purge in its hardware division. So he isn't going to be given necessarily a blank check to just you know run a run a muck. He may be given uh, a mandate to make the reduced lineup of of products, you know, uh, more expensive actually and, and classier, and sell that as an upsell because I think Amazon's come to the point where they realize we can't just put out a bunch of cheap nodes to to try to you know, uh, nudge people into buying things, you know, their, their division, you know, you'd have an event and they announce 65 things that all just listen to you or looked at you to get information about you so they can sell you things. Uh, when they started doing their quarterlies recently, they realized that isn't working this time around. I think they announced, uh, nine products, I believe, uh, in total, maybe 10. Uh, so again, it's a huge reduction and a lot of them are home devices. They're starting to realize that they can get data uh through i think they bought the one of the companies that makes the biggest roomba business to mm -hmm, map your to map your house uh they're they're going heavy into you know cameras and some other devices you know like you said they have the tablets as well i believe that they're going to just start upselling those devices raising the price on them and putting them in front of uh cheaper alternatives as the amazon essentials the trusted brand from amazon people will they may look at the price and say okay well this version of the device is you know forty dollars more but uh, with Amazon, Amazon Prime, I get it a little cheaper. I get it next day and I probably get, you know, some kind of servicing warranty uh, protections with this versus buying, you know, third party person who is just pitching on Amazon. That's where they might start to use Panos' like, you know, love of creating expensive devices uh, towards that again. Uh, and again, this also may just be a personal thing. You may just want to be work different hours, work closer to home. Who knows? Because again, Amazon is also in Seattle as well uh, with uh, with Microsoft. So there are a myriad of reasons why he left, but it seems like his leaving isn't to, you know, be the president or CEO of Amazon. It's to basically take his position up that he added at uh, Microsoft and just do whatever it was at Amazon. And to, you know, you brought up a good point. Amazon's main goal is to get in your home and, you know, not to tell anybody things they don't already know, but listen to what you do and. You know, you, you brought up the vacuum cleaner, the, the Roombas and the vacuum cleaner and the mops. And, you know, think about it. Those have cameras on them. That's how they map your your area. Why did 
Amazon invest in such a thing? Well, that camera can probably be used to tell what, you know, get some ideas of products that you use, what you may be running out of. And you get somebody like Panos in there and he takes that technology and starts to put it in their Amazon Alexa devices, the Echo devices. And, you know, he markets it in such a way. Look, consumer, these are these new things that this device does. That gets us to purchase it, but also gets Amazon better access to what we do. And those little emails, I get at least two a day. You know, hey, in case you missed it, Amazon. You know, and it may be something that I looked at or something I have looked at in other places. So that lets you know they're paying attention. That's how they make their money. You know, take the tablets, for example. There's two versions of those tablets. There's the one with Amazon ads. There's the one without. You pay a little less for the one with the ads. You know, so it's not the same level of product that Panos will be dealing with necessarily at Amazon, but he's got a chance to build a new foundation for products a new you know better product lineups and ultimately that's what he did at microsoft look how far we've come from surface pro 1 to surface pro 9 you know look look how far you know we didn't even have a laptop a surface laptop was not even thought of when the, when the pro came out so I, I think it's a win for him now all of us microsoft fans we you know we, we might like to have him back and we're worried about where, you know, what our future is as far as hardware. But I think for him, it's a clean slate. Like you said, maybe not a blank check, but he's got a lot of things and a lot of information that he can get his hands on. We're speculating that something was done wrong because money was cut because, you know, somebody was mad or he was mad at the roadmap. Like you just said, maybe he just wanted a new office you know new office a new project maybe in his mind i've took surface as far as i as far as i'm comfortable you know maybe he's looking at the budget going okay microsoft this is as far as you're going with the resources you're giving me i'm gonna go do something else he's got a new office new toys let him go yeah and he's he's also starting potentially from the bottom you can only go up from here i suppose yeah uh uh, with Surface, I mean, you've topped, you know, a couple quarters with $2 billion. Uh, the last few have been down. Uh, so if you see a trend of, you know, I've taken it to, like you said, as high as I can go and going from here is diminishing returns, if not negative. Uh, let me jump ship and start over basically and, you know, build this thing up because, again, I, I can only go up from here might be his mentality. And if he's getting paid roughly around the same amount, it may just be worth uh, less stress to do that that process. Uh, we will briefly talk about uh, the event that happened uh, without him, uh, surprisingly. Uh, before we wrap this up, uh, we did have a service event. Before the news broke, uh, he was scheduled to be there. Uh, the news broke and he was no longer there. Uh, we don't know about the timing on any of that. We also believe that uh, his departure was probably in the works for quite a bit now. So it, it all seems surprising and quick to us and sudden. But uh, the event, uh, I guess, invites were sent out at the end of uh, August, was it? Mm -hmm. Something like that. So between the end of August and uh, the day of the event, he may or may not have already been taken off of that. Anyway, we got uh, Sachin Nadella coming out uh, with also Yusuf Midi, uh, and they talked about AI for a long time. They talked about Copilot. Windows Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot, Office Copilot. And they said all this to say that Microsoft is now moving forward with just Copilot, just as Cortana was kind of everywhere and it was just known as Cortana. Copilot is kind of the successor and will be known as just Copilot across the board. Although there is a Microsoft 365 Copilot for business and enterprise people because they got to make money. Uh, they uh, showed off a bunch of things that we've already known about for the past six months. And it was kind of surprising for those of us who have been following, for those of you who haven't. Uh, it's stuff like, I believe, the next uh, update in Windows uh, will be 22H2, I believe, which brings uh, Windows Copilot, which is basically going to be an icon on your taskbar that'll bring up a uh, side, side panel 
uh, that you know is basically where your actions and your notifications are nestled. If you click on that, you'll get a uh, what amounts to a, a Bing chat uh, UI where you can start asking uh, that copilot about all kinds of things, anything from searches to functionality on your device, and it will give you information about that. And you know in a very detailed uh, manner and you get to pick how detailed it is, which you know I think you can do with Bing chat anyway. Uh, and then all that kind of stuff will also be brought to you office as well, uh, to Teams, to basically every product or platform Microsoft has will have that side, pan side pane with a, you know additional co-pilot functionality. Like I said, they talked about it for half an hour. Uh, you can talk about the devices now though. You can get to the fun parts that was quickly glossed over. <laughs> The devices were interesting. Like we mentioned, um, you know, we did see some cut downs. We didn't see a new Surface laptop. We didn't see a new Surface Pro. We did see the Microsoft Studio laptop, too, was slightly upgraded with a little bit better trackpad. And uh, they did show a nice accessibility demo there to where you don't necessarily have to, with the accessibility functions turned on, you don't necessarily have to have full use of your hand now to be able to move and operate the mouse. I thought that was really cool. We did see the spec. Oh, yeah. you, can, you can program the trackpad uh, yes. to do certain functionalities uh, in lieu of uh, the traditional, you know, tap or, or finger taps or whatnot. So, you know, like you said, they had a person come out and, he explained about you know how he cried the first time he got to see the settings that he could basically make this device work the way he uh, needs it to work versus the way that you know all of us have you know or uh, many people have gotten used to traditional trackpads and things working. It's super cool. And, and when companies do this in general, I'm gonna give all companies a very quick shout out. When companies do this in general, whether it's Microsoft. HP, Apple, Lenovo, it's a big deal. So that that was cool Huge. to see. We did see the spec bump that we had been looking for in the graphics department with the ability to get a 4050, a 4060, or the, let's see, what was the name of it? The 200 Auto 200 Generation GP. Auto Generation GPU for the business user out there. We also saw the ability to get the Surface Laptop 2 in 16 32 or 64 gigs of ram with a 512 one terabyte two terabyte or nope just two terabyte and that is a gen 4 ssd i removable. believe they said say that one more time it's it's just removable uh, user removable. it's all, yep it's also removable and i believe if i remember right these things start at 1999 now don't want to gloss over this they did give us a micro sd card slot and an extra usb a port so ports are always good on these devices glad to see that uh they also did something interesting uh i wish they'd done more of it they did a head-to-head -head test with the m2 yes. macbook uh pro i think it is or macbook yes MacBook. that because i don't think they did a pro update yet very surprising to, to me and they did a render test and I believe Microsoft finished about a minute and a half before the M2 chip. Again, we'll have to see how this works when it comes to batter, battery and proficiency uh, off uh, off connection. So, you know, that's what the M2 is known for is to uh, a great balance between performance and battery. Uh, plugged in, I'm sure uh, the Surface Laptop Studio 2 is a beast, but unplugged. And we'll see how that works and how the fans kick on and all that other noise. I'm sure every reviewer is going to knock it for that. But the fact that it was able to do that in a demo, still pretty cool. And I'll say this. I don't want to go too far. It was nice to see a real demo, not a spec, spec, speculative PC that we do not know the specs of and we didn't get funny graphs. Assuming Microsoft didn't pull any punches, you know, with anything going on on the MacBook, and I don't think they did, it was nice to see a real head-to-head -head demo. Agreed. What is there the device you got? Let's see. We have the Surface Laptop Go 3. For those that are interested, this is your smaller laptop. It was updated to the... 12th gen cpu so we're still in the typical microsoft way we are one generation behind you have the 12th gen 
Core i5-1235U processor with integrated Intel Iris Xe graphics with 8 or 16 gigs of RAM. This SSD is 256 gig and also removable. The rest of the laptop though is not much, it, it's not been changed. It's still your 12.4 inch pixel sense display with the 3.2 or 3 to 2 16 by 10 aspect ratio with the 10 point multi-touch screen. Only a 720p webcam there. I would have loved to seen them bump that to the 1080p that is becoming more widespread. You did get the Omnisonic speakers with the Dolby Audio Premium support and it only weighs 200 or 200 2.49 pound this becomes at a little bit bigger price tag this year 7.99 starting out still fairly cheap for a laptop with these specs it is available October the 3rd yeah uh, we also got uh, information about the service go for business that is the new title for it uh, it wasn't demoed on stage. These next couple of products we're going to list uh, weren't on stage. They were just kind of given off as a press release, which kind of is what has people worried about the future of uh, the service lineup. Uh, mm -hmm. Despite it, you know, the products being made, they are specifically being uh, ushered off into the enterprise ether. Uh, so this again, the service go for for business uh, comes with a new 13 chin Intel Core i7. Uh, nope, that is wrong. It comes with the Intel's new N200 processor, uh, which I believe is the the replacement of the gold uh, chipset that they used to have. Yep. Uh, this is supposed to come with about 80% uh, faster performance. Uh, but other than that, it's still the same device. Uh, I believe uh, the reason why it's going for enterprise is, you know, I think you and I mentioned off camera that more people in enterprise are using this versus uh, consumers. Consumers probably go to an iPad for something that's 13 inches and below. Uh, but businesses use this as a kiosk, as you know, uh, on the on the floor retail devices. If you need to scan things or check people out, stuff like that. In restaurants, uh, you probably build them into your own uh, uh, pay system, things like that. So that's what this device apparently is destined for. Uh, you can still buy it. It isn't that you know Microsoft says no to you. You'll just have to go through the business channels to get it. Uh, it's a bit more expensive. Um, and we'll hopefully see, keep seeing them improve on it uh, as far as they get enterprise feedback from it. So it may not be super light like we'd like it to be in the future, but uh, hopefully they keep iterating on it so that more businesses uh, start to pick this up. Uh, the last thing we got was the Service Hub 3. Got an update? Yeah, the Service Hub is still a thing. Uh, it, it's got a new update uh, and the update comes in the, uh, I believe the, the component's called the Surface, uh, what is it called? There's a specific thing that's basically the connector to the back of the Surface Hub. So the screen doesn't change. You still get offered the 50 and I think 53 or 50 inch screen plus the 80 inch screen as well. Uh, but the Surface uh, Computer Hub part of it, the CPU thing, is supposed to become with 60% uh, faster uh, CPU performance and 160% faster GPU performance. Uh, and like I said, if for those of you who have a Surface Hub 2, I think it's Surface Hub 2. I think the Surface Hub 1 no longer is able to upgrade. Or maybe I think the original Surface Hub can get upgraded with this piece. So you can go out and buy the computer part connected to your current Surface Hub and you get a whole bunch of new improvements, uh, all the new Windows 11's features with AI as well coming to it uh, and the specialized uh, uh, conferencing software. I believe they're getting some new tweaks that are specific just to the Surface Hub uh, that come from companies like Cloud in a, uh, Cloud in a Teleframe. Uh, for better video, better video conferencing uh, stuff, video segmentation and unified backgrounds. Uh, Copilot will be infused in whiteboard, uh, so you'll be able to kind of brainstorm stuff, uh, get some ideas uh, while you're all kind of working in the office, and some more, like I said, AI-driven features will be specific to the Service Hub. So those are our announcements from the event. Uh, like we said, it was a bit lackluster as far as Service Laptop, uh, a 10th generation or 10th version of the Service Pro, no headphones, uh, nothing cool on the horizon as far as Surface Duo is concerned, but we got a very bare bones update uh, for some devices I guess people are using. I think the Panos news kind of overshadowed the whole thing. Agreed. You know, uh, you know the, the, the whole entire presentation. Now, I'm excited about Copilot. I think we get the build of that this 
next week on the 26th, I believe. Unless you're in Canary. Right. Unless you're in Canary, then you're not getting it. You're not getting it at all. Sorry. You're getting nothing. Sorry, buddy. Nothing for you. But um, I'm excited to see that. Now, as far as the devices, the personal on a on a personal level the laptop studio 2 is me that would be the device that i would want to see the most and i think that's the device that most consumers would want to see and i think from knowing someone that went to the event i think the feeling in the room was is this the last time we see this style of event with these products i think there is some worry out there Maybe not behind Microsoft doors. They've got a plan. The problem is we don't know that plan. You know, we love to know things. We love to know what they're up to. We love to know what they're doing. But for me, I think like we talked about off camera, we're going to see the hardware division get pared down. Maybe the laptop studio stays as the top product. I think there'll be some version of the surface pro come back and i think the surface go may very well stay because i see a lot of restaurants like you were just talking about use that device for their ordering you know where you the waitress comes to your table and they've got their app and she's just tapping in your order you know and then they've got one sitting on the table where they've got it paywalled where you can pay on the surface device or you can see your order or make changes, you know, until it comes out to you. I think stuff like that's going to stay. But there was a concern that this was the last event of this style. And I kind of agree with that. Yeah, I mean, as far as the events are concerned, uh, I mentioned this even when Apple did theirs. And I'm sure we'll say the same thing for Samsung and perhaps even Google at this point because they've leaked everything. Uh, a lot of these events can just be press releases. Uh, this followed one was up one. With with videos on YouTube or whatever, whatever video marketing you want to do on TV and stuff like that. I don't necessarily think you need to walk journalists and fans of the products through the devices themselves. You can do that through marketing material. I think they're already doing it now with some of the new commercials for the Apple uh, iPhone 15 where they talk about the camera. The event itself is now feeling redundant because we sat through it and we know what the camera can do. But, you know, I go ask my wife who uses an iPhone all the time what the camera can do. She'll only she'll recite what she saw in the commercial, not what she saw at the event. And, um, you know, we've gotten to a place where I guess like you just said, like, you know, an update to the Surface Studio laptop or maybe a potential consolidation. That was my other prediction is that we, you know, go from all of these different laptops and computers to, you know, maybe a lineup of three or four devices. The Surface Laptop Go being the uh, education slash uh, entry device. Uh, that stays at 12.4 screen. Uh, we have the Surface Pro because that is the you know flagship device and it's still the only tableted Windows PC that's really mainstream. Uh, and then we have the Surface uh, Go for businesses where again, may not necessarily be for restaurants, which it can be, but for you know IT admins who need a single uh, Windows app uh, portable, uh, you know, they're in the field, you're making changes, going from office to office. Uh, and they don't necessarily use a surface other any other type of device they don't use a laptop they're using it they just use the go uh you know vm wherever they're at on the on the go maybe they start building lte into these things as well and that just is that device and uh going forward the surface laptop becomes the surface laptop studio um it, microsoft starts offering uh different chipsets for it and no longer needs to machine a whole different chassis they just say hey you know if you want the basics you can get an i5 like we did a couple years ago uh, or and you can get it all the way to an i9. All you have to do is just put a different chip into the same thing. So again, you have four devices. Microsoft has fine-tuned them to the best of their ability, and that's what we get going forward. Uh, that's not a bad business. It isn't no. bad. It it's, no. may not be what panels wanted. It may not be what you know people who are huge fans of crazy hinges and you know all kinds of convertible and different modes might be a you know might not want, but. It's still a business is still viable and it still you know gives us a windows signature experience uh hopefully high quality still uh going forward uh with that being said though let's uh let people know what our kind of hardware we're playing with and we'll, we'll let these people go on about their day yep they can uh, ponder their weekend and ponder their thoughts on what microsoft surface and xbox is up yeah, to and 
you know, maybe we can, maybe they can dream of Christmas a little early of what Microsoft might give them. But as far as hardware, um, I've got a couple of um, gaming monitors coming in from Mono Price that are very budget friendly. I'm not, I don't think they're necessarily going to be budget performers. I think they're going to punch above their weight. But those are actually due here today, so maybe by next week I can have some. A really, you know, so at least some feedback for you. Um, our editor has my, let's see, the Lenovo 5i desktop review. So that will be hitting our website shortly. I think some of you might find that interesting. I enjoy doing those for you because to me, a desktop is a more subjective device because when we buy a laptop, what do we see? We see categories we see business we see thin and light we see gaming and a lot of people buy the desktops and they're sitting on the desk and they end up being multiple use they may be homework doers one day they may be video editors they may be gamers you know the next day so i think this is i think you guys are really going to enjoy that review i took a little bit of a different approach to try to explain that yes it's got the fancy rgb that the gamers like but that's not its only purpose and the only reason you should buy it uh i have a ton of stuff uh finishing up the fold review uh the flip review as well um i am also testing out uh these new glasses you guys might have noticed uh this i also want to ask you about those yeah, this is from Gunner. They are a performance uh, optical business. Um, they are designed to reduce blue light, and they do an amazing job with that. Uh, that I've tested at least so far. Uh, it turns everything to softer yellow when you're using a computer. It's supposed to reduce eye strain, headaches, and migraines, anything uh, induced by looking at your computer screen for longer than you should. Uh, I got some uh, sunglass versions of those I'll be testing out. I'll be heading to Disney to do that uh, this weekend. Uh, I am also wrapping up my uh dell xps uh, 13 plus review uh we also i also have a monitor that i am testing out uh all this stuff should start dropping early next week like i said the fold if you guys are interested in our phone coverage reviews will be early next week the flip is following that uh we'll see if we can get our hands on an iphone at some point maybe test it out with pixel going forward um you know we'll start to have more of these type of things because we are developing a pretty good relationship with at&t and they're providing us with a ton of hardware i also have to finish wrapping up my uh galaxy s9 plus tablet review uh that thing is amazing dex has come a super long way and is potentially competitive yeah. with microsoft uh with windows on a tablet device so the way windows things the way it's uh intuitive about you know uh snapping and kind of going about the operating system it is perhaps i i mean it, i would say arguably better than android uh, on it on a tablet device and chrome os on a tablet device so uh, i will have that review up shortly uh, with all that being said, where can people find you at uh, if they want to talk to you about this week's events? Please do. Uh, David PAJ1978. Still calling it Twitter just like I did last week. So Twitter, go find me, David PAJ1978. Can't get, can't, can't get X out just yet. Yeah, uh, you can find me at Minehead1 on that same site until they start charging for it officially. And then you will not see me on there because I'm not paying for something that was free for 14 years uh, when it worked. Uh, I will also be at Kareem Anderson on Threads. Uh, that will be my parachute. That will be my safe landing space. So once they start charging, folks, find me over there. Uh, hopefully, uh, you guys have a great weekend. You enjoyed our conversation. Uh, we'll hopefully be talking about Microsoft stuff, uh, Surface stuff specifically in the future. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Hope have we a good weekend, on. folks. Let us know your opinions. We'll go at it again next week. Bye.